name is Dr. Lee Taylor, and I'm a professor at Florida Gulf Coast University. In my research, I evaluate the importance of social connections and social support among women, and how those relationships impact a variety of life outcomes. What we've learned is that the quality of relationships and the quality of our social support in our life is critically important to our overall emotional, physical, and mental well being. As social workers, we know about the importance of relationships, especially within the context of our work. We know that clients and their families are more likely to succeed when they have positive connections with each other and with us. For this session, I want to talk about skills that will improve the connections in our own lives as we navigate this complex time and remind ourselves that when we thrive in our personal life, we are better able to pass along those successes as professionals. So I appreciate this invitation to discuss the impact of physical distancing on our relationships and to identify strategies to keep our connections strong as we continue to engage in proactive health measures due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So what is happening in our relationships right now as a result of the need to engage in physical distancing and quarantine behaviors. First, we have to acknowledge the intense strain affecting us all. Effects of the pandemic have caused not only health insecurity, but economic insecurity, a radical shift in our lifestyles and disruption to that work-life balance. And often we are experiencing a social and political division about how to move forward safely and effectively. The impact of these new stressors on our personal relationships is then compounded by the loss of access to healthy coping skills, like the gym, a night at the movies, dinner with friends, or even that afternoon trip to the playground. As a result, we may be experiencing less satisfaction with our relationships, a decline in our mental health, and perhaps an increase in less positive coping skills, such as substance use or overeating. This makes us vulnerable to a cycle of negative interactions, which then increases our stress and increases our negative coping and on and on. Stress is manifesting in our personal relationships and interactions along a spectrum. There's any sort of responses from clingy and to absent and everything in between. As social workers, we are hearing about an increase in dysfunctional communication, yelling, unbearable annoyance, contempt, silence, and isolation. And as educators, we see that children are responding similarly. Parents are having to manage temper tantrums, disinterest, boredom, sullen, or out of control kids. And we need to acknowledge that all of these feelings are legitimate. Change is never easy. And as we grieve the loss of our routines, our access to friends and family, and a life of normalcy, we need to give ourselves and one another grace as we adjust to this new normal. This means that regardless of whether you are in quarantine alone or with others, we can be proactive in protecting our relationships by attending to how we communicate, being intentional with our time and practicing empathy, we can create safe and supportive spaces within our social networks. Communication and connection are the cornerstone of relationships. It is that back and forth and the demonstrations of care and concern and the just being there, that is the joy and the necessity of being social creatures. And perhaps now more than ever, we need to be communicating with intention, presence and awareness. It is important to listen to our, what our minds and bodies are saying and experiencing in this moment and then be thoughtful and explicit about expressing our feelings and asking for what we need. Whether that is communicating that we need some individual time away from the kids or uninterrupted time for a work call, an online outing with a friend or just more fun, more intimacy or time together, it helps to have a plan and be specific. Similarly, we need to know when to engage, asking permission, is now a good time to talk or can we make sure to touch base tonight? Then take a few deep breaths and visualize the conversation. Set an intention to use constructive and not destructive language. And remember it is a mutual interaction and that the reaction you receive may not be what you were wanting. And in that case, know when to walk away and ask for a break in the discussion. 
and sometimes we just need to agree to disagree. On the flip side of being capable of having yourself heard clearly, it is important to give the gift of being present and a good listener. Ask the people in your life what they need right now. For example, questions like, how can I best support you? Or are you asking for advice or for me to just listen? Opens the door to really meeting our loved ones where they are at. Next, it's important to be intentional with our time. Being together is great, and it's easy to get overloaded with current events. We have to be mindful about not wallowing in the complexities of COVID-19 and all that accompanies it, that we end up forgetting to enjoy time together, laugh, and revel in our relationships. So set aside time just for connection. Find the five to 10 minutes a day and identify someone to check in with, be it a partner, children, friends, or family, and ask each other what is working and what isn't. Find ways to work together within the context of this unique situation. And remember, sometimes it's also great to be alone. We need to re-energize, reflect, and relax during all of this change and living in the unknown. Caring for self is difficult for most of us. So I encourage all of us to seek intimacy, go for a walk in the sun, and put down the devices that allow for two-way nonstop access between us and the world and just be. This means setting realistic and appropriate boundaries about when and how you are accessible. This can mean saying no, stepping away, and asking for space. But it also means we can get creative in how to make meaningful connections with people in our lives without using up all of our internal resources and reserves. Intentional communication does not have to happen frequently. Take lots of time or be in vivo to be meaningful. There are multiple ways to engage in an expressive and significant way during times where you have limited capacity to give. Take a few minutes when you can to craft a handwritten note, send off a quick photo or shared memory via text or email, and remember that you're still communicating and forging connection on your terms, time and comfort level. And finally, we have to continue to practice empathy patience, and vulnerability in all of our relationships. Be aware of the loss created by physical distancing, the loss of work, school, milestone events, and recess or date night, and all of those social interactions that keep us grounded. As we maneuver this new space and the myriad of emotions being experienced by everyone, remember that the ability to just articulate a feeling and have someone understand is monumental. And then remember to say you're sorry. We all make mistakes and we are going to make more. It is important to take responsibility for our actions. When we are impatient, reactive or harsh with our words or faces, we damage our connections. Research shows that apologizing repairs the damage, restores mutual respect, trust and dignity, and eases the stress negative interactions put on those relationships. Looking ahead, I know we will all find a balance in this new world. But while we wander in the wilderness, I encourage us to see the opportunity here and to reevaluate how we connect and make meaning with people in our lives. Thank you to all of the social workers for the work that you do and that you will continue to do. And please remember to nourish yourselves, your relationships, so we can all stay healthy and stay connected. Thank you.